What's up guys, it's Will back again, and today's review is Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk is a war drama film that was directed by Ang Lee and is based on the 2012 novel of the same name written by Ben Fountain. Okay, so this film primarily follows Joe Alwyn's character Billy Lynn, a 19 year old war hero that's returned home to Texas from Iraq with his fellow Bravo comrades that are all on a promotional tour that ends in Dallas for a Thanksgiving Day football game. They're on a promotional tour because of a very brutal and tense firefight they got into in Iraq that received a ton of news coverage due to the sheer heroics that were displayed by these soldiers, especially Billy Lynn. And most of the movie is spent with Billy Lynn as we watch him interact with his family after he returns home from Iraq, as well as other American citizens who attempt to understand his plight in some way. And the rest of the film is spent watching Billy Lynn and his fellow soldiers quickly readjust to life back in the States after serving in Iraq, while we also watch them being honored on Thanksgiving Day in a pretty extravagant fashion. So look guys, this has to be one of the most disappointing movie experiences that I've ever had ever, because you know how I've said before that I saw the trailer for a film, thought it sucked, but the film itself actually turned out to be good, well, just reverse that. Because I saw the trailer for Billy Lynn several times, and this was easily one of my most anticipated films of the year. I mean, the trailer looked gritty and dramatic and exciting, and Ang Lee was directing it. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, let me tell you, so much went wrong. I mean, how could Ang Lee, a two-time Oscar-winning director, the guy who directed movies like Brokeback Mountain and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and of course, Life of Pi, which was one of my favorite movies ever, directs such a poorly done film. I was sitting there in shock at what I was watching unfold on screen. While this story has noble intentions, the writing is incredibly heavy handed and lacking of any subtlety whatsoever. Instead of subtly feeding you the message that our troops don't always get the quality of proper recognition and even treatment they deserve, the filmmakers decide to just club you over the head with that message consistently. I mean, I kid you not, there are lines that go something like, no one really understands what you guys go through over there. People really need to know the truth and other ones like, most Americans don't think about you guys all that much, and they really should. Stuff like that, you know, that just sort of feels almost too direct. While these are definitely messages that the vast majority of Americans would likely agree with, it feels like the filmmakers overcompensated by delivering those messages so consistently and forcefully that as an audience member, you don't even have time to think about the story itself. And most of the conversations go absolutely nowhere. Some do, to be fair, but a lot of them will have you scratching your head at their conclusion, trying to decipher what the purpose behind it even was. The dialogue, as I said, is mostly pretty heavy handed. Some of it lacks subtlety, some of it is okay, and some of it is pretty cheesy. So there was actually a significant amount of debate online regarding Ang Lee's choice to shoot this film at 120 frames per second because most films are traditionally shot at 24 frames per second and some thought this increased FPS format would be distracting. To some it might be, but I didn't really have a problem with it. While there certainly are technical aspects that weighed this film down, the frame rate wasn't really one of them. The way that the shots are composed Composed, however, is something that I did have a problem with. There are a lot of shots that are composed in a way that has the character looking almost directly into the camera as if we're getting the perspective of the person that character is speaking with. And if this technique was used sparingly, I probably wouldn't have had much of a problem with it. But it's used fairly frequently and after a while it became pretty frustrating. The pacing of the story is just off as well. So the whole foundation of the film is laid on the events that take place in Iraq and how heroically our group of soldiers acted. The problem is that the film doesn't want to show you what actually happened in Iraq until the last act or so of the movie. They give you a little taste here and there, but the problem is that without the appropriate insight into what actually happened, you can't identify with the soldier's struggles the way you should earlier on in the film. Because the film seems to be focused on providing commentary on how everyday Americans don't really know much about what our soldiers go through, so we don't understand their hardships. And then in this movie, they want you to understand the soldiers and their hardships, but then they don't really show us much of those hardships, so we can't possibly grasp what they're going through because we're not seeing it. Very little of this movie actually takes place in Iraq, and whether that was intentional or not, it's problematic because you can't empathize with the main characters really because you're not seeing a ton of their struggles. I'll also say that the acting is pretty hit or miss as well. I actually really enjoyed Joe Alwyn's work as Billy Lynn, and I was absolutely shocked to hear this was his first role ever because he delivered a really high quality performance. His performance was really well rounded and it helped raise the quality of the story by delivering a protagonist that was likable and interesting. I also thought Kristen Stewart was really good as well. She's not in the movie all that much, but when she does show up, she makes a very strong impression. I know there are many moviegoers out there that believe she can tend to be pretty one note with her acting performances, but she actually was really good here. The other five important characters are Albert, Team Bravo's agent of sorts, played by Chris Tucker, fellow soldier Shroom, played by Vin Diesel, the owner of the Dallas football team, Norm Oglesby, played by Steve Martin, Faison the cheerleader, played by Mackenzie Lee, and Sergeant Dime, played by Garrett Headland. 
All these actors did fine in limited screen time, but none of them really made much of an impression on me to be honest besides Vin Diesel. The other four were okay at best, but the acting in this movie besides the big two in Joe Alwyn and Vin Diesel is pretty average to below average I'd say. I will however say that the one war scene you do get in this film is pretty well done and I did enjoy it for the most part. It's somewhat brief, but it does do a good job showing you the brutality of war and why these soldiers come home with emotional baggage. I also enjoyed some of the commentary on how our government treats our soldiers and whether whether or not our presence in other countries actually does any good. This commentary was much less heavy handed and thus felt more impactful. But as a whole, I gotta say, I was extremely disappointed with Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. I did think it had a few good acting performances, one well done war scene, and a few moments of quality commentary. Sadly, I also felt the writing was extremely heavy handed, the acting was mostly subpar, the cinematography was really awkward, and the pacing was a mess. I'm gonna give Billy Lynn's long halftime walk a 5.5 out of 10 and definitely recommend you pass on this one in theaters unless you read the book and feel like you have to see the film. So did you guys see Billy Lynn's long halftime walk yet? What did you think of it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if not, let me know whether you'd be interested in watching this film or not. And as always, if you like this video, click that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for much more content like this. That's all for now though. This is Will Foxification signing off. See you in the next review.